welcome to Scribble 8, your source for art and inspiration. We're here in Redondo Beach with artist from Southern California, Bob Dobb. Well, hello, Bob. How you doing? So, you know, looking at your collection, is there any piece or pieces that really stand out and say, hey, to everybody, this is kind of the direction that Bob Dobb might be heading? Um, yeah, the Disney, the show I did for the remixing the magic, it's called Cigar Break, has like a little kid, um, Disneyland horrified by seeing Pinocchio with his head off. So that's kind of definitely the direction. I think I thought I hit something there with that painting. I had the most, that's the most fun I ever had on a painting. So well, I've always been really into Disney animation and background painting and stuff and I think that Pinocchio film was by far had some of the most traditional kind of interesting backgrounds and uh, I think the guy's name was Gustav Tendren was the artist who designed everything for that but I so I knew right away I wanted to do a Disney uh, Pinocchio piece for that Disney show at Gallery 1988 so I remember hearing a story about some kid that wandered backstage at Disneyland and was horrified because they saw the characters with their heads off. I think the mom ended up suing Disneyland or something. So I thought it'd be kind of funny to do that as a kind of spoof type thing. Kind of celebrate the yeah. moment, the, yeah. the wives' tale, as yeah. they would say. And it almost didn't get in because he was smoking a cigar. But I guess Disney was like really didn't want any smoking or drinking. But the cigars were from the movie, so they kind of made an exception so it was pretty they were really strict on what they were doing with that show i think disney got freaked out too they, much on them huh yeah <laughs> i think they allowed it and then i was surprised that they allowed it and then you know they gave all the artists tickets to disneyland to go kind of hang out there and and you know get inspired and then yeah but i don't think they're gonna ever have the show again how did you get uh, involved in creating art well i used to be very athletic and then when I was about 13, I got, I was diagnosed with cancer, uh, bone cancer. So that kind of handicapped me in a way. And I wasn't able to, um, you know, I used to play baseball, all that. So I was looking for another outlet. So I got a guitar and immediately I wanted to start playing in a band. Like I didn't, even, I, I need like three chords. And, uh, so I did that for like 10 years and then it had like about four years into it after high school into the band I was kind of a music major but I wasn't really that into the theory so then I switched although you know I am now um but at the time I was like you know I just want to kind of play in the band I don't want to worry about all this theory so I switched over from uh being a music major at El Camino College the community college and I went into art and that was really cool so I knew that, and you know, I was just like immediate kind of, you can kind of be a little more creative and stuff like that. So then, yeah, from there, just I kept doing art and uh, enrolled at Otis College and really kind of was exposed to all these types of art here in California, you know, back east too. And um, yeah, I didn't really start that. So that's kind of how, how I got into it. And I was like, I want to learn to draw. I want to learn to paint. And all the instructors were like, well, what's your concept? And, you know, the concept is, was very important, but I felt, you know, traditional drawing and painting skills were pretty important too. So do you think, you know, having a bout with cancer and trying to get your body healthy again, and obviously keeping your mind focused on being very positive, do you think that kind of gave you an edge uh, over some of the other younger students because you had that life experience to put actually back into your artwork? I think I was a little more mature because that was about, f I mean, that, that also was kind of, I definitely would say that that really kind of made me kind of be a little more focused. Like, Hey, I want to live life because, um, I don't want to cause any negative stirs or anything like that. So I, I went in there with a real positive attitude and definitely just, you know, I want to make the most out of whatever it is they have to offer. I got the most I could out of all the instructors that were there. So... It was it was definitely something that definitely ha like helped me get through like just be a little more positive going through that whole experience. So, but I wouldn't regret if I could go back and change it at all. 
and not have cancer or anything, I, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't do it. Because I wouldn't have met, you know, I probably wouldn't have met my wife, all the friends I have now, and where I am in my life, I'm pretty happy. So, um, yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't change anything. So when analyzing the collection of work that you have, and, you know, sitting in front of you today, it's uh, obvious that there might be an alter ego in some of your work that might reflect your actual persona. Yeah. Is that true? Have you I heard that it, before? I think or? it is, yeah. Definitely. There's this, yeah, it's definitely either an alter ego type thing. He, you know, people always ask why people are smoking in my paintings and stuff like that. And I can't stand smoking. But I definitely, you know, he, the, my alter ego actually comes out occasionally when I have conversations with people. I become this other person. How would you kind of articulate some of this uh, alter ego that's going on in these paintings? Um, well, I've said it a lot, but it's mostly, um, I, the darker side of human nature, I think is what I try to describe it as. And then, you know, it's, I don't know, it's kind of cartoony, but it's more rendered. Um, I don't know. It's just very narrative. I like to tell stories. So there's always this dark thing that's happening maybe in my paintings, but I think there's also this humor and there's also this positive um kind of uh optimistic there's optimism somewhere in the painting somehow some way thinking about your characters and some of the influences are you going to uh kind of work within the environment of creating some type of sculptural piece that represents your artwork yeah actually yeah actually i am Kind of, I've always been kind of playing with. I mean, I have. There's, you know, there's the vinyl toys and all that. But I think that I, eventually I am going to want to take some of my characters and somehow sculpt them. Um, I wouldn't know, even know where to begin. I mean, but that is something that's definitely on my to do list. So. Now, are you working in the vinyl industry right now? Do yeah, you have any I have a toy. Yeah, I have a toy coming out next year that I'm actually doing the turnaround sketches for right now. So this little character called Louis that uh, he's in a lot of my paintings he's a little kind of egg shaped uh, devil I don't even know how you, what you describe him but he's this little red character in my paintings <laughs> so for now thank you very much and thanks for listening kind of thanks to John Goff for helping out Scribble 8 and to all of you for tuning in until next time check you later <laughs>